Welcome into this fireside chat. I'm Tony Mulvey, Senior Analyst of Economics and Transportation at FreightWave Sonar, joined by Nate Gilmore, SVP of Network Integrations and Innovation at Triumph Pay. Nate, how's it going? Not bad. Thank you for having me, Tony. Yeah, so the whole idea of this conversation is going to be surrounding force multipliers and network integrations and the standard integrations across network partners. Kind of lay out like what what that means, what start at the very top. Yeah, well, I mean, let's talk about what a force multiplier yeah. is first, right? Yeah. So a force multiplier from an engineering mechanical perspective is anything that um, creates more force than one thing was would normally be capable of, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's where you can make an equation that one plus one equals more than two, right? Yeah. Um, and so the idea is that um, there are multiple force multipliers that people can apply to increase operational efficiency and operational outcomes uh, within their organizations. Um, the number one that we're hearing a lot about right now is automation. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the way we're hearing it right now is AI. Yeah. Right? Everybody's saying, I want to use AI for X, I want to use AI for Y, which is great in, in concept because mm -hmm. there are a lot of things where the data you need for AI to uh, operate on, uh, that data exists within your four walls. You have access yeah. to it, you have ease of use. Um, but there are some processes where you want to automate, but the data doesn't exist yeah. within your four walls. Um, and so the question is, how do you do that? How do you go after that stuff? And so, because the value of automation is density of data. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And with that, I mean, when you think about it, the density aspect being so important overall. I mean, how do you grow the data? I mean, you can go out and build integrations with sure. numerous partners, but it's timely, it's time consuming, it can be expensive, oh, and, sure. and every time you're doing it, you're putting in that same amount of effort, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of ways you can go after it. Again, one, you could, go and build point-to-point -point integrations with each of your trading partners. Mm -hmm. And largely, that's what people have been doing with EDI for years, yeah. right? Um, you can go out and build a point-to-point -point integration, whether it's API, in EDI, or whatever. But to your point, you'll end up spending a lot of time and a lot of resources. And then you've got to maintain that. Yeah. And you've got to maintain that times every one of the trading partners that you're dealing with, uh, which is challenging. Um, so the other way you can go about it is you can look for force multipliers. Mm -hmm. You can look for places where it's not a one-to-one -one or a point-to-point, -point, it's a one-to-many integration. Um, and that's where things like the network we're building um, come into play, where you can have a single integration that gives you access to multiple partners. Yeah, talk, kind of talk through that. When you think about that multiple partnership and multiple touch points, in this integration or a single integration that has multiple points, like what is that, what's the value in that? I mean, obviously it's data density, but it's relationships, things like that, that maybe weren't there before. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when you have an open loop network, um, you can, uh, one of the great value props that come out of that is that each new participant in the network doesn't just benefit one other participant, mm -hmm. they benefit every participant in the network. And so you, you get density of data, but you also get density of relationships. That means that each new person that joins the network then has access to a whole other group of folks. Yeah, and with that, I mean, it leads to innovation, right? Because you're getting diversity of thought, too, in some, in some ways. Because you're starting to, those partnerships are expanding as they grow. I yeah, mean, sure. how important is that as you continue to grow these this network of, of many as, of, as opposed to like a single network. How important is that? Well, I'm gonna take a step back actually for okay. a second because you, you touched on the idea of a network of many. Yeah. Um, one of the key force multipliers that we take advantage of at Triumph Pay is looking for standardized integrations yeah. with specific strategic partners. Um, rather than, I mean, First off, we do have to, there's no denying and no getting away from the fact that we do have to do specific customized integrations with some very large players, yeah. some very large proprietary systems. Of course, everybody else in the network gets to benefit from that, mm -hmm. right? But 
Um, we also, uh, and, and probably my biggest responsibility is to seek strategic partners that we can develop in a standardized integrations through where each new member of, uh, e each new participant in the network doesn't have to go build their own integration with them. They've got it already built out standard. Um, and so that's, that's kind of a force multiplier for us because it allows me to become really a network of networks. Yeah. Each of those TMS partners, each of those freight audit providers, each of those uh, factor management system partners, they're a network of their own, and yeah. when they join and, and integrate to our network, we become a network of networks. Yeah, and with that, I think it, it opens the eyes to, to so many, but it, it gives you the access, right? You don't have to go build, like you said, you don't have to go build that relationship that may not be there, and it's, it increases this efficiency overall, right? Oh, absolutely. You, because it allows you, instead of building out these processes and integrations the entire time, you're doing it one time, and then you open up a whole new world. And like, kind of what are the efficiency gains that people see well, from this? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, specifically Triumph Pay, where we really play is AR and AP automation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we've got customers who've seen 35, 40% imp improvement yeah. in their processing time. Of course, that in and of itself is a force multiplier. That means their accounts payable team isn't focused uh, they, they, they can continue to grow yeah. at a clip without adding bodies. Yeah. And I think that's what everybody's looking for right now, right? Well, certainly. I mean, if you look at, if you look at freight right now, we're at, what, month 25? Yeah, 25, 26. 25 or 26 of an unbelievable freight recession. And for brokers and fleets and carriers, uh, they've got to find every last little bit of efficiency they can. Mm -hmm. But here's the cool thing. Investing in integrating to a network like ours um, now will be jet fuel when the recovery happens. Yeah, because it sets you up for success. I mean, your ability, you don't have to go build these during a market where you've got, you're so busy you don't know what to do. You have the ability, it's already automated. You've done the process now versus in the, in the midst of it when you realize that hey, this would be a lot easier or a lot better if it was automated. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and there's, there's a couple things you have to look for when you're automating. Um, what we've seen at least is that uh, for, for automation to make a meaningful impact in, in uh, operational efficiency and labor, you really have to have about 15 to 20% coverage of whatever that process is. So if it's AR and AP, I've gotta have automation coverage or data coverage with 15 to 20 percent of my vendor base or of my customer base right yeah um, if I don't if I can't get that level of of uh, coverage then it's it's tough for me to make operational decisions whether that's manning whether that's uh, um, uh, SOP changes and things like that and so that's where density really really matters all the density yeah. that we talked about yeah, I mean, in reality, 20% isn't that large. Uh, I mean, it is, but that's it's a, not. That's a minimum. Yeah, it, it, it seems like by doing, going through this process and acting on it now, you should be able to hit 20% fairly, fairly easy. Am, am I thinking about that the wrong way? Well, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, if, you, if you were to, again, depends on what type of a process you're looking yeah. at, but we're just talking ARAP in, in the area that we play, um, we generally touch way more than that. If you think about it, today, Triumph Pay, um, we touch about 48.9 billion in unique brokered freight. Um, we're working with three of the top five freight brokers, seven of the top 10, 30 of the top 50, that's built-in density yeah. immediately. So you integrate day one. If you, let's say you're a shipper. You integrate day one. You get that. Or there's 280,000 carriers that we're paying annually. So uh, density and size matters. Yes, it does. It's, it's funny that you say that because it, you think about it, you hear times that it doesn't. But size does when you're talking about data, for sure, because having that density makes it, I mean, more data availability across the thing. You can, it's easier to streamline. 100%. You, you gain insights that you might not have had before. 
you increase efficiency. I mean, all of those seem like a win. And if you can do it in a, without having to go out and build your own integrations and yeah, you can have strategic partners, but having more options is always better than having fewer. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and we, we integrate directly with the systems that most of our customers are already working with, right? So OTM, uh, the, the freight audit provider that they're using, whether that's uh, Intelligent Audit or, or others, uh, are, are some of our partners. And then also with the TMS systems that our customers are using. So if you're looking um, at folks like Revanova, folks like Descartes, Algex, folks like McLeod, yeah. um, we've got integrations with all of these guys. Yeah, so you're not having to go, uh, they're not having to go say, yeah. hey, we want you to integrate with Triumph. It's already happened. It's already it's there. Already, yeah, so it's the second they want it, it's flip a switch and it's on. Well, oh, generally. Fig yeah, figuratively speaking, <laughs> flipping a switch, right? So, but I mean, overall, when you look at this, this network of networks, I mean, where where's the future? I mean, once you have all of the partnerships built out, or it's really hard to get there, but once you get there, it's how do you well, continue to innovate after that? That's the question, is, is the innovation, and where are we going from here? Um, you know, the, the United States market is great, the North American mm -hmm. market is great, but the reality is, as, w as we work more and more with global shippers, um, we have to be global. Yeah. Um, and so one of the big things is beginning to process in multi-currencies. So we just recently rolled out pesos. So we're now three currencies. We've got line of sight to a couple more currencies by the end of the year. And, um, you know, in the first half of next year, you'll see significant growth in that space for us. Um, so global. The other thing that's really big is, you know, we've been focused on trucking for a while, but um, I think you'll see the network grow to include multimodal transportation. I think that's important because I think as supply chains become more dynamic, right, it's the flexing of modes becomes more dynamic, global supply chains are more dynamic. I think it's important to go global and have those offerings, but it also brings in expanded networks, right? I exactly. Mean, and then it's, hey, we don't have to worry about going global because our partner is global and has right. that, that integration. So it, it's a force multiplier there, right? It's exactly. do it once and I get the ability across the board. Yeah, ex exactly. I think, so when you talk about what's, what's coming for the network is you're gonna see more partners. That, there, I don't think that there's, there's a time where, hey, I've gone out and got all the partners. Yeah, no. I mean, we're going to continue to find places where, I mean, my job is to find partners that s fill strategic gaps and allow us to continue to grow and, and service a larger and larger portion of the supply yeah. chain. And so you're going to see, see us working on additional partnerships and additional standard integrations across modes and, uh, and across currencies and internationally. That's awesome, and I think it's so valuable, especially as you see new technologies arise. I mean, everything is innovating, right? I mean, automation, AI, again, it's the buzzword right now, I mean, you look at the news anywhere, and it, you can't go a day without seeing AI talked about. So getting to that point, while we're still kind of in the early innings, it feels like that's the route we're headed on. It's just getting to that point whenever it may be. Right. Well, and, and understanding, though, that, I mean, that a lot of times when people are looking for AI, they're just looking for automation. There are some things that it's not AI. It's, it's just repeatable automation, yes. stuff, stuff that takes repeatable jobs and allows shippers, brokers, factors, carriers to reallocate those bodies to higher value mm -hmm. activities. Some of that's AI. Some of that's going to be just automation that you can get through integration. Yep. Yeah, and I think it's that's the important part is if you can automate things, you can reallocate resources, those resources can generate value. And then it's this We're continuous it's continuous loop, right? So Nate, thank you so much. Where should people go to find out more about your network of networks? Well, certainly uh, triumphpay.com uh, is a, is a great place. We're on LinkedIn. Uh, we've got a booth here. 
um, we're, we're all around, uh, but certainly look up, look us up for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much, yeah. Nate. And I got, just got a comment. I love your socks, man. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good one, Tony.